Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we are talking about how INFJs and INTJs can better manage stress, and in particular, stress from extroverted sensing. As NI dominant types and people who enter into a flow state when they engage their introverted intuition, INFJs and INTJs struggle more than any other personality types with extroverted sensing. That means we are more prone to feeling overwhelmed by the pressures and the demands of immediate reality. I say immediate reality because it's like anything that you have right in front of you right now is more difficult to deal with when you're an INFJ or an INTJ. Often we relegate these things to be called distractions and we find ourselves putting these things off and we avoid talking about or dealing with or doing things that are right in front of us because we are so focused on the future. So preferably we tend to deal with things on a mental basis. We think our way out of situations, but a lot of things around us require action and sometimes thought needs to translate to action. So you need to feel uh, or think a certain way about something and then you need to do something about it. But a lot of time life is very spontaneous and chaotic, meaning life will sometimes push itself on you in a sense it will uh, challenge your plans it will challenge your ideas it will challenge what you have in your head in your mind and it will force you to adapt now often if uh, these challenges are small and daily and simple it's no problem you can do it it's with a bit of a like oh okay fine i'll take care of it or i'll do it and whatever uh, you can deal with it and get out, out of your head and you'll forget about it rel relatively quick and you'll still be able to go into that NI flow zone. Uh, but a lot of the time these pressures are constant and long term and you find yourself like in a mode where it builds up slowly because there is too much of these things, too many of these interruptions, too many of these uh, uh, spontaneous changes, too many things that you cannot predict, too many uh, to tosses and turns as you go. And so it builds up a high level of stress and you more, the more you, there are two things that come with extroverted sensing. First, it uh, tends to drain you of energy very quickly. The more you engage in it, the more drained you tend to feel of energy. Basically, you lose your uh, lust, your interest, your energy. You lose the interest to do anything. You become tuned out, apathetic, bored, uh, and you find yourself basically kind of uh, zooming out completely. So uh, that's consequence number one. Second, extroverted sensing tends to lead to an increase in anxiety. So extroverted sensing can cause you to find yourself feeling a bit unruly, restless, chaotic, uh, and really just anxious, uh, mentally unstable. If you're normally peaked and clear-headed and focused, uh, when SE comes into the picture, extroverted sensing for short, uh, it builds, it, uh, it causes you to lose that clarity and focus and it causes you to lose the sharpness of which you when you think and make decisions you become irrational you do things on impulse or feeling uh, you say things without thinking you uh, lose the ability to basically uh, think and plan in advance so the general pattern is the more you use extroverted sensing the less you use introverted intuition these things are anti-correlated when you study cognitive psychology there are networks in the mind that are anti-correlated with one another meaning if you have these areas that light up in the mind when you use ni you have those when you use se uh, to give an example i'm not actually pointing at an area in the head right now i'm just giving an example showing you the processes they are spread out throughout the mind uh, but they are different to each other and they cannot be used at the same time. So often in these situations it is very hard to deal with these situations from an NI perspective and often INFJs and INTJs we have it in our heads that any problem in the world can be solved through NI. There is nothing that cannot be planned or accounted for or speculated on or visualized in advance to give you the answers necessary to deal with it. 
you only need time to think and privacy and focus to make sure that you can channel these things. But in a lot of situations, a problem goes away as fast as it appears and requires you to act very quickly on impulse. So to make this video a bit more real, I'm going to give you some practical examples. So I have been moving for the past uh, four weeks. I got the call about the apartment about uh, yeah, three weeks ago and uh, started applying four weeks ago. So it all happened very fast. And uh, what should you say? Uh, we moved in the week after, so it was a very quick move. It was incredibly quick. It was uh, really, um, yeah, it was beyond anything we could control. We started packing, planning, putting everything in boxes. Uh, our whole life changed in that moment. Everything was twisted, turned on end. There was really little time to plan or think ahead or to do these things. So uh, very quickly I found myself having no time to shoot videos, no time to write, no time to uh, do anything for myself, basically. And of course, uh, uh, yeah, it required spontaneity, like a lot of problems required quick thinking on the feet they would call us and say yeah you need to pay cash only uh, you need to find a bank you need to take out money uh, so <laughs> yeah I had to basically run across town to take out money because nobody has cash any days uh, in these days um, you need to uh, make decisions on impulse in the situation okay discuss 150 euros extra are you able to do it yeah <laughs> okay fine uh, sure uh, whatever <laughs> get that get it out of my face uh, and so on so you find yourself with all these like situations that you cannot plan for account for in any way uh, and so uh, my response tends to be I should have seen this coming or I should have foreseen this. I should have known this would happen. That's uh, basically my response to anything that happens. I should have known better. I should have been able to anticipate this. My and I should have been able to pick up on that this specific reality would occur. I should have anticipated this scenario. I should have spent more time uh, thinking about it, planning it, foreseeing it, visualizing it, and thinking it through in my head before it happened. So immediately there's a frustration that I didn't uh, plan it enough and that I didn't see it coming. But of course I could say that about anything because the world is very unpredictable. There are a million different ways the situation could go down and there's no way to account for every single scenario. But uh, still there is that frustration of I should have seen that one coming. I should have known. I should have been able to nail it down and understand that this specific scenario would occur and have a plan for it and continuously plan for it. But I didn't, and that's one of my frustrations. The other thing I'm noticing in these situations is my tendency to uh, go into an almost autonomous-like state, a robotic state, uh, when dealing with overwhelm. The more overwhelmed I'm, I'm getting, the easier it is for me to uh, lose my vigilance, lose my ability to stay present, lose my ability to pay attention, to listen, to uh, be in the moment. I find myself, in the beginning it's easy, but the longer on it goes, the more my attention dissipates, uh, dis disappears. <laughs> and so I find myself unable to pay attention to anything that's happening around me, and I become non-responsive or I become a very automatic in what I say and do. Everything I say is a yes, mm, okay, whatever. And uh, my eyes become kind of like flaky, like uh, half awake. And uh, I notice that I have no energy in my myself, no attention left, no focus, no uh, nothing, basically. And that situations, that's a very scary thing because uh, these situations require you to be very alert and very quick on the ball and very fast and you cannot fall asleep or tune out or avoid these things. You have to really stay alert and stay vigilant in these situations. Notice your surroundings, make sure you don't miss anything, forget anything, make sure that you uh, basically are aware of what's happening around you. But yeah, uh, that's 
the first thing that goes off when you face incredible stress is your inferior function. It's the first thing you lose. Uh, uh, everything eventually, like if it goes on, everything goes off and you become completely you know, dysfunctional. But the first thing you lose is really extroverted sensing as an INFJ or INTJ. Uh, so as uh, the situation progressed, uh, yeah, I found myself constantly pinching myself for, yeah, <laughs> really trying to be alert and energetic and to have energy and to uh, keep going and something I have noticed was like when I was younger I thought overwhelmed led to simply inability to function you know in the past when I was young uh, when I faced overwhelm I would shut down so I would become really apathetic and really I would pull back and avoid and distance myself and disconnect from everybody around me and uh, basically half door slam people or you basically just cut myself off from everything uh, but uh, as I grew older I recognized that yeah I was much stronger than I thought so I had an ability to persevere and push through so uh, what I did notice was I could uh, kind of pull on this robotic state and use it to my advantage what I do notice is uh, I can consciously put myself in this state and do these things and do it for a very long time so it can help me push through in a situation that's very heavy so if you are already completely exhausted completely drained stressed to the max you can kind of go into the state and recognize that it will be all right i will keep going i will keep going i'll keep going and what you do have in this situation is you do have an ability to respond and reflex and to deal with what's ahead of you uh the problem is you have you lose the ability to think ahead and to plan and to uh yeah uh, think long term about situation you become simply relegated to your short term reflexive behavior so it's very good for if you like putting together Ikea furniture or uh, carrying heavy boxes or uh, like doing these difficult things because yeah you can just bite it together and just do it and there's another box I'll pick that one up and I'll do this and I'll pick that one up and then I'll go and you can just keep on going without stop without eat without sleep without anything you can just keep on going in forever basically so you have an ability to persevere in these situations uh, and to keep going and you are of course uh, yeah you're not completely brain dead but you do have to worry that you will make some mistakes and you will do things without thinking and you'll uh, put things in the wrong room and you won't have that ability to just uh, think about the logistics of the situation or uh, do you might do things more slowly than usual so uh, be mindful of those things uh, basically when you are overwhelmed there is a moment where you can recognize that yeah I am overwhelmed and I'm kind of detached and I'm kind of unresponsive and uncommunicative you know in these situations it's very difficult to communicate with others it's very difficult to uh, basically uh, stick to a plan or a strategy it's very easy to just uh, do things on reflex and on impulse and to uh, be very conservative in how you do things uh, so you have to recognize that this state comes with uh, uh, issues that need to be dealt with and that uh, can be difficult so recognize that uh, yeah, other people might need you to talk with them about what's going on and what's happening during these situations especially a partner or friends and family members they might need to hear what you're going through what you're feeling what you're dealing with but a lot of the time in these situations you are at least i am completely detached from my emotions i know this might be not be the same for an intj uh, who might go more into fi but for an infj often it is um, more ti or te even uh, in that it becomes uh, that you uh, completely numb your emotions and shut down all things emotional and become completely <laughs> um, focused on practical action and behaviors uh, so you become as an infj you become very mechanistic where at, i think as an intj you become a bit more prone to escaping into fantasy so that's the other side of it the other issue is you might find yourself uh, in these situations wanting to escape into a comfortable fantasy so you might find yourself feeling that uh, you've uh, 
want to ignore what's happening around you, pretend it's not happening, or you want to dream about the ideal scenario and the ideal plan and a visualization you had in your head, and you, you want to basically uh, have that completely, and you shut out everything else that's happening around you that goes against it because you're so set on that happening, and you're so sure that that's what you want and that's how you want it to become. So you can't even think or accept any other reality. You become, I think, uh, very... Um, uh, if it becomes impossible, if it becomes completely unrealistic uh, to do the things you want to do, uh, it can happen that you uh, basically escape into a fantasy and you pretend it's not happening and you fall into wish belief <laughs> ideas uh, instead of uh, thinking practically about the situation. Um, for me, I think... Uh, I almost become too practical in these situations so I completely shut out what I want and what I need and what's important and what I like and what I dislike and I just do whatever is easy so that's also something efficiency comes before any kind of ideal in these situations when I'm overwhelmed I become hyper obsessed with efficiency and speed so I just do anything that's easy, simple, or whatever it makes it go away as fast as possible. So what I do notice is that uh, when I'm dealing with extroverted sensing, I can be very, very sloppy, uh, fast, and uh, great at doing things very quickly, but very good at making mistakes or half-assing issues. So I will do it. Uh, I will do the task but I will probably only do half the job and I'll hope that nobody sees that off. <laughs> and uh, I will hope that uh, I'll put something up, but maybe I'll, if I can't get a screw in, uh, I will expect it to hold anyways. And I'll be like, okay, probably it won't fall apart, I hope. I think it should be okay. Uh, <laughs> I think it shouldn't collapse, uh, hopefully. <laughs> so that's... Uh, my kind of issue that um, yeah uh, also when cleaning and taking care of my environment or uh, dealing with all these kind of tasks uh, I can be very sloppy and messy and so I do it I clean but I usually say I'm better at rough cleaning uh, <laughs> I'm not good at fine cleaning so I'm good at uh, basically running everything through with a vacuum cleaner very quick but I'm not good at uh, wiping off every speck of dust from something <laughs> and so that's uh, something I've noticed in myself and I think it comes down with uh, you know you as an INFJ or an INTJ when you deal with extroverted sensing you want to deal with it very fast and you want to um, be rid of it as soon as possible so that you can go back into your champion state and I and so the thought is okay if I can rush to do this if I can get rid of it all as fast as possible then I can uh, basically focus and think better and uh, plan and uh, go back into thinking about the future uh, thinking about my idea and uh, really visualizing and drawing up the concept and understanding it better and so uh, Make sure that you're not uh, playing ping pong with yourself, basically. Make sure that you're not uh, doing half-assing problems so that they will come back to you quicker. Recognize that if you half-ass something, uh, it will come back to you quicker. So uh, you do half the cleaning and then uh, it will take uh, an hour for it to become dirty again. Uh, you do all the cleaning and it will take a day <laughs> or something like that. Basically, uh, uh, the better you do something now, uh, the longer time frame you will have before you have to do it again <laughs> that's at least one way to think about it now I don't want to be all bad I want to say uh, I am incredibly proud of myself for how I handled this move and uh, putting all things together and uh, dealing with the situation while working uh, my job at the same time uh, I uh, managed to uh, move all my stuff from my apartment uh, to uh, the new apartment. I managed to put so many things together with the help of my girlfriend, of course. Uh, I was able to uh, really 
create something that feels so complete and so amazing so fast it took me two weeks to be done with it all and that was uh, that's something I'm very happy with I know a lot of people might end up with boxes in their house for half a year uh, doing a little bit from time to time but uh, we did it all in basically one go we put together all the furniture that we had got and from Ikea and uh, all the different companies we uh, were able to organize and clean everything so after everything was gone and done everything was uh, also looking neat we were able to uh, put it up so it looked nice and really organize things and uh, still we were also able to you know uh, cook and uh, take care of ourselves to our best extent during it so I am happy that uh, despite of the overwhelm and exhaustion and the uh, struggles that I felt during this period that yeah I was able to come out on top and uh, while extroverted sensing is not my flow function um, I will still take gratification uh, satisfaction from uh, successfully and in a good way using extroverted sensing even though I'm not very good at it so the fact that I'm able to put up lamps or put together furniture uh, or uh, hammer in spikes or uh, deal with all these practical tasks uh, the fact that I was able to still do it that's incredibly satisfying for me uh, because I know I'm terrible at it but I know I still did it and I know I did it with very little complaint and with very little help because we had nobody to help us out during the move uh, because it was just the two of us uh, during this COVID-19 quarantine uh, bullshit uh, I'm not saying it's bullshit but I'm saying it's difficult to deal with uh, just uh, by myself so I'm stronger than I think and more capable than I think and uh, I can deal with more stress and the more overwhelm and more difficulty than I might first expect so uh, the same goes for you I think you can handle a lot more than what you think and uh, once you're done it's gonna be all worth it because now you'll have time to focus more and you'll have time to uh, really dig into your ideas and really work things out so deal with your demons um, to make sure they go away for real uh, make sure you really uh, get rid of your problems and take care of them because uh, once they're gone uh, the reward will come and you'll have time to yourself and you'll have time to uh, do the things you really love and enjoy the most that's my end message thank you for watching this video and i hope to see you all in the next one